Hey everybody, welcome back to Japan by Foods Ramen Series. I'm your host Frank and we are in the Nakano neighborhood of Tokyo. If you watched the first episode in the series, you might remember Nakano. We visited here before, but there's so much insanely good ramen. We're back in this neighborhood. The place that I'm going to be introducing today is not your typical ramen shop though. They serve a very unique French cuisine inspired oyster ramen. Super excited to be showcasing this place and introducing it to you all. Let's go. All right, here I am, ticket machine. A couple of different options here, but oyster is a huge theme. And I'm gonna start with their standard, which is red snapper and soy milk. And I'm also gonna get one more. Ramen number two, I'm gonna be getting their spicy oyster ramen. I just talked to the manager here and he said, you know, from the three levels of spice, two is a good balance, right there in the middle. That's the one I'm gonna get. And here we go. The name of this restaurant is actually Tadaima Henshinchu and Tadaima is kind of like, I'm home or I'm here. And Henshinchu means to transform. So kind of translated as, I'm here and I'm transforming. And I think the transforming idea is very much coming from the fact that this is not your typical ramen. Look how beautiful this thing is. It is like, I think, the perfect balance between French cuisine and uh, Japanese cuisine, that being ramen. And just looking at it, I mean, it doesn't really look like ramen. This goes in a very contemporary, I think, modern angle. And starting with the soup here, it's very frothy because they use a milk frother to give it that consistency. Slide in there. Oh, that's delicious. And in the corner here, this darker colored sauce, it's basically balsamic vinegar and oyster together. You know, something they'll often use in French cuisine. So that's poured on top. And when I went in the corner here, I got a little bit of that. Mm. Quite sweet, but it goes so well with the frothy soup, which is basically soy milk and sea bream or red snapper or Thai in Japanese. If you're a big fan of fish, oysters and sea bream included, this is your bowl and it is delicious. It's got that wonderful creaminess coming from the soy milk, but it doesn't feel too heavy because soy milk, I think, doesn't weigh you down maybe as much, say, milk wood or even uh, pork bones and things like that. So depending on where you kind of sip in the soup, you've got uh, different experiences. So right here in the corner, there's cayenne pepper and black pepper, so it's a little bit more spicy uh, here in the throat. If I go back for the uh, darker colored oil here, it's a little bit sweeter. You've got uh, the balsamic vinegar and the oyster uh, sauce. Oh, so good. I'm gonna dive into the noodles here. A beautiful full. With the spinach, it's very refreshing. You know, it kind of like offsets that creaminess you get from the soy milk a little bit. And it's interesting, in some ways you don't feel like you're completely eating ramen, but these are ramen noodles. It might even be like a, a cream sort of pasta. Kind of medium thick, but leaning a little bit closer to thin. A uh, beautiful bite to them. All right, we're moving on to the toppings. Got uh, meat here, and I think it matches well with the uh, creamy, let's say, uh, rich but not too rich soup. And for the toppings, yeah, and you uniquely have rusk here, a crunchy texture alongside all those softer textures. And this guy's uh, been soaking in the soup a little bit, so I'm soaking up those wonderful uh, flavors from the soup. Here's another piece of uh, chicken, chicken breast. Dive into that. Beautifully soft, delicious. I saved the best topping for last. This is what they're all about. Beautiful, beautiful oyster. And on top of the oyster, they actually have tobiko. 
that oyster is like not cooked all the way. So not quite a raw oyster, but not quite a fully boiled oyster right in the middle. So nice and soft. Yeah, as soon as that oyster just sits on your tongue, it's so delicious. And you know, with the tobiko, these are very small uh, fish eggs. And when you bite into them, they kind of pop a little bit. So it's an interesting sensation there when you're eating into them. The toppings, I think, really just drive home that point that this is not your typical ramen. This is kind of in between, again, French cuisine and Japanese cuisine. Maybe even leaning a little bit more towards French cuisine. Definitely pushing, I think, the definition of ramen to a greater height. And maybe even the transforming is the fact that the flavors, for me at least, were transforming as I was eating it. All right, I still have room, of course, so I'm gonna grab my second ramen here. This is a spicy version of basically what we just had, and I'm getting the spice level right in the middle. One, two, three, I got two here. And I'm gonna order that right now. And this one basically uses the same soup, that is soy milk and sea bream. But what we're getting different is a different punchier seasoning. I was told right now that the seasoning, it's gonna be a stronger flavor. That's what I'm expecting. And that makes sense because this is a spicier one. And it's hard not to notice the mountain of togarashi here in the corner. A lot of red pepper you get in the corner here. So if I go for that with the soup, yeah, I'm gonna be burning my throat a little bit. So I'm gonna try and carefully get a little bit of that, but not too much of it. So you get that same wonderful gentle creaminess, but supercharged with the spice. And I think level two is perfect because you still get those subtle flavors coming from the oyster seasoning as well as the soup, the sea bream, and the creaminess from the soy milk. I can understand why this one is popular. That's really tasty. Moment I've been waiting for. I'm gonna dive into the noodles, see what that tastes like. It's really good with that togarashi spice. And the corner I just got was the same oyster uh, and balsamic vinegar seasoning. So that's a really strong flavor. It doesn't take over from the spice, but it kind of like, um, it's an even fight, let's say. Whereas if I grab the corner here with all the togarashi spice, that is where the spice is gonna take over. And I'm gonna do that right now. Wish me luck. Oh boy, it's, it's, it's arrived in full force. It's a good idea, I think, to mix it a little bit. But again, just like the other one, depending on where you're grabbing the noodles or where you're putting your spoon, it's gonna be a little bit of a different experience. So for toppings, we pretty much have the same, let's call them usual suspects. We've got the pork and chicken shashu here. Um, nice thin slice of pork too. And because it's covered in the togarashi spice, um, definitely feeling the heat. Here's that chicken, bottoms up. Now to round out the toppings, we have the same refreshing spinach, also the rusk, so you can mop up some of that leftover soup. And of course, we can't forget the beautiful oyster topping again. You've got a lot of the flying fish roe on top. And one thing I didn't point out before was that they actually broil the oyster, so you get a nice smoky flavor when you bite into it. There we go. I'm personally a big fan of oysters, so I love this. That soup is deliciously addictive, and yeah, again, when you get it with that pepper, definitely has a, has a kick to it. But uh, yeah, these are two delicious bowls. This is a place, Tadaima Henshinshu, that I really recommend. If you're in the Nakano area, this is one of the best ramen shops here, and one that takes things, uh, yeah, to another level, I think, with their ramen. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please, yeah, like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next ramen series video from Japan by Food. Thanks for tuning in.